Hey guys, Movie Junkie here and it's the month of October. So for all the fans of horror out there, you know what that means. October is a month that you can enjoy, you have an excuse to enjoy your horror movies every single day of the week to get your genre on. Anything to do with horror, you don't have to have an excuse. You know, some family members are like, why you want to watch that? It's October, okay? It, the entire month, as far as I'm concerned, is Halloween. So, for people like me who love horror and anything to do with horror, it's a really fun time of the year. It's my favorite holiday, honestly. I know it's for some people who love Christmas, they get offended when I say that. But for me, it's all about October. So, every year, I try to look back at, you know, what it is about this genre I love so much. And share that with you guys and this year I decided I was gonna try to do my top five now top fives are really hard to pull off because there's so much out there that gets dropped by the wayside and people are like oh my god what about this what about that so this is my top five guys this is the um, I'm sure there's stuff that I'm probably forgetting but this is the five movies that really impacted me and what I decided to do is break it down into subgenres. So horror, like any other genre, also has subgenres. Um, for instance, there's body horror, there is um, horror of the mind, there's supernatural horror. So every week I'm going to try to bring you guys something, a different top five based on a different subgenre. This week, it's going to be my top five body horror films. And don't want to make this too long so I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as possible for you guys. So my number five is Slither. Slither is a movie directed and written by James Gunn and that's the same James Gunn who gave us Guardians of the Galaxy. There's actually a little um, Easter egg to Slither in Guardians of the Galaxy if you're paying attention. It's in the collector's vault. Um, there's actually one of the worms from Slither in the vault. That on that. But that's just me showing off my Easter egg knowledge. Um, Slither is a movie that, while some of you say, yes, it's sci-fi horror, it is comedy horror, but I also feel like it's body horror because that movie has some messed up body horror in it. Um, we have some a, a meteorite lands, of course, and it's carrying these alien womb-like things, right, that infect people. And um, Michael Rooker is in it. He's also in Guardians of the Galaxy. He's a guy who gets infected with like the head bug and he has sex with this girl and it's it's ugh, it's very it's very disgusting. It's not conventional. It's not conventional sex at all. It's just horrible. And just to see every scene it just gets worse and worse. It's like his infection is is just messing with the way he looks. And then there's a scene in the barn where they find her and she's like the size of like a giant balloon and she's like being torn apart by these bugs and they fly everywhere and they go into people's mouths and into your eyes and whatever orifice it could find this movie is awesome it's funny it's well acted it's it's it doesn't take itself too seriously and it's just really gross you know it's really really gross worms and slugs and that kind of stuff that grosses everybody out i don't care who you are slugs are always gross so slither is my number five uh body horror film my number four is scanners um scanners is an older film i think it's like 1982 maybe 1984 somewhere around there and um it's directed by david cronenberg he is the king of body horror right and it stars Michael Ironside, who you might know from Total Recall, I think he was in Sin City as well, as uh, this guy, this scientist who has these abilities. He can basically explode your head with his mind. And so it's like a battle of scanner versus scanner. So, you know, think X-Men, but really, really effed up. <laughs> and um, the scene, of course, that everybody remembers, it's the, um, I think the guy's like a news reporter or something like that. And... Michael Michael Ironside explodes his brain on television and I kid you not you could go look at that now go look it up on YouTube and that still looks really really good and it you know it goes to practical effects I hate CG um, in these recent horror films I know it's a cheap way to do a movie and in an inexpensive way but 
you know what 99% of the time it doesn't work and I really don't like it so practical effects will always win out for me and scanners is an excellent uh, example of how good practical effects can look on film and I mean even not just the exploding head uh, oh, sorry guys I'm just looking at my laptop to see my notes too not just the exploding head but you know the the way his veins like you know they look like they're bubbling in his head when he's trying to do these things you know this this saying Jean Grey's telekinesis this thing looks painful and horrible so scanners I know there are a bunch of sequels but the first one is the one that stuck with me uh, my number three is cabin fever not the stupid remake that took place last year or this year whatever time it was but the original cabin fever that eli roth did a few years back that movie also has some of the most messed up body horror that i can remember of recent times so we have a bunch of kids that go out to this cabin to hang out and the water supply is tainted i think it's due to some chicken factory or something that is dumping the waste into the water and this movie is messed up on so many levels in that one it's one of those films where it shows you that you never really know who your friends are until shit hits the fan because these kids turn on each other especially you know there's this guy he likes this girl and as soon as it looks like something is wrong with her they dump her ass out in i think like a barn or something or some kind of shack tool shed or something and leave her there to rot and her fate is like horrible she gets like her face eaten off by a dog or her stomach or something. it's just gross and then she gets bashed in with a shovel epic and of course the scene that stuck with me and i think it stuck with a lot of females is the scene where the girl is shaving her legs in the tub and you just know what's coming and you know what it is the sound is worse than the visuals this is one of those scenes that sound plays such an awesome uh, part of it that kind of noise that it makes when it hits the sores on her uh, yeah. <laughs> so I just love that movie because of that you know and like I said it has a lot of other things going on but the body horror in this movie is just awesome uh, my number two another David Cronenberg movie The Fly and this is not the old black and white one this is 1982 I think if I'm remembering correctly this movie wins an award, a personal award for me, in that it's the only film that ever made me throw up. I am not kidding. I don't mean that as a metaphor or figuratively. I freaking threw up. I was watching the movie and it was that scene where um, Brundle, uh, Jeff Goldblum's character, throws up on the guy's hands and it melts, you know, and it's like, because he wants to eat it. I had to run out and I upchucked right there in my friend's yard because it was just, I don't know, I didn't feel it coming on. It just, so that movie stuck with me. It took me years to watch it again because I didn't want that to happen again. And I'm actually a fan of the sequel as well. I think The Fly 2 is very underrated. I think it has a lot of good stuff in there. But The Fly, the first one, some people say it's a metaphor for AIDS or cancer or what have you whatever it is it's an awesome body horror film there's just so much going on there and it just gets worse as it goes along uh the scene where gina davis is giving birth and it's like a larvae of a fly larvae oh god it was just awesome so yeah there's a lot of stuff to enjoy there if you love body horror films and it's my number two and it brings me to my number one and my friends know exactly what's coming. Anybody who uh, is on my page, uh, my Facebook page, they know what's coming because I talk about this movie all the time. It's my all-time favorite movie. It's my all-time favorite horror movie. It's John Carpenter's The Thing. And this is a movie that is near to, and dear to my heart because this is a movie that I saw when I was eight years old. This was my first horror movie. And I made all my cousins watch it. I got in so much trouble. I can't remember the spanking, but I think I got my butt spanked. And this was a movie that just blew my mind. I could not process what I was seeing, but it was so awesome. And then as I got older, I could appreciate not just the visual horror, 
but the psychological horror that takes place in this movie because it's also like a top, in my top five it would fall in psychological horror as well the isolation the paranoia you don't know if the guy sitting next to you is human or not I just really love this movie and it stands up so well I watched it again recently a couple weeks ago uh, it's come it, I think it came out on blu-ray like the um, the anniversary edition came out on blu-ray recently and this movie looks fantastic the practical effects have held up so well that it's still creepy the scene where the head tears off slowly and you see all the like the ligaments tearing and then the spider legs come out the scene where the doctor's hands get eaten through the guy's chest with the defibrillator and you, it's just you know it's coming and it still has that impact like the first time you've seen it I adore this movie it is like so flawless to me I, I don't see anything wrong with it no matter how many times I've seen it and the ending is just fantastic I love movies inception did this as well I love movies that leave the ending up to the viewer for you to decide what really happened there in the end did he survive did he die well, was one of the guys the thing or were they both human I love that kind of shit so guys I have to see this movie was my movie growing up I absolutely adored it and there is nothing to me that is more perfect in terms of body horror than John Carpenter's The Thing now I'm sure you guys have your own favorite top five body horror films or maybe you have a number one that you think it's better than The Thing which no there's there's no there's no body horror film better than The Thing there's no horror film better than The Thing I'm going on the record with that one <laughs> anyway if you do please feel free to comment like and share this video and um, next week I'm gonna do another top five my top five supernatural horror films so if you guys have anything in mind let me know but until then guys enjoy your October have a wonderful horror month and until then bye bye